Hello and welcome to the video. I'm actually behind the camera today. This is Jose Luis Guerra and I'm here with my guest. I'm Reese Rowan and this is my partner and fiance, Liz Quintanilla. Great. Can y'all, uh, we're actually here to talk about your, your last deal you did uh, over the 4th of July weekend, I believe. Yes. And uh, I'd like to ask you some questions about that to share with everyone. Can you, I guess, first of all, let's start off with uh, how, what kind of marketing have you been doing to get that lead? Well, we use bandit signs and yellow letters. And this particular weekend, we put one out right by some railroad tracks, which she suggested. Yeah, because I figure cars have to stop at a railroad track, so you're guaranteed to at least get somebody to look at your sign. Well, what really happened was this lady needed to sell her house, and uh, she went around looking for the sign, and ours was the only one she could find, our lucky day. It was very lucky, because we're very consistent about bandit signs, since we put bandit signs every weekend. We know who is putting out bandit signs and where, and it's amazing to see just one bandit sign come up from one investor once a month, but we're there every weekend. And she found our sign and called us, and we called her back. And sure enough, there we are. And my beautiful fiance building up a relationship with her. You want to talk about that? Oh, yeah. Um, she called us the Sunday after July 4th weekend. So when everybody else was taking a vacation, we decided to lay out bandit signs and just do our normal routine. And we were very responsive. When she called us at 3 o'clock on Sunday, we were at her house by 7.30 that evening because we did our due diligence, looked at Travis Cat, did all of our research. And so we had an idea of what the property may be worth and then actually walked through the property. Property. Would you like to talk about that? The property? Yeah. Well, the property was a time capsule of the 70s. The house was built when in the 50s. Something like Probably that. Probably had a remodel in the 60s and yeah. hadn't changed since then. The kitchen was about as big as your closet. And they had dogs running all over the place, but they didn't tear the place up too much. But it wasn't too bad inside, considering some others. Yeah, but what the real key to her seller distress was she had a property under contract in Georgetown and she was ready to move because she's lived in the house since the 50s or 60s and was and remembers when Crestview was the no, out in the middle of nowhere, the equivalent of Leander today, and she was ready to move to a um, bigger home, more in the country, with lower taxes and but she doesn't qualify for her house just based on her job she needed to sell her house and needed a proof of funds letter to keep all of her current contract in place yeah because she had reached an agreement with another investor but he backed out on her and she was about to lose that deal she had in was it georgetown it was in georgetown and uh, so she needed to get something going real fast so she could keep that deal so, so this sounds like a huge win-win for both you and the seller and probably the second seller who was able to sell their home to the person you bought the home from. Right. So. Because what actually happened was we partnered with Shanoa so she can come in and see the house and do the final negotiation offer. So it was actually uh, Hippie Hollow Realty who was on the contract and we did all the arrangements so that we actually did an assignment of contract to a builder because in that particular neighborhood you're actually seeing McMansions go up because of these price per square foot. And so what will be more likely happen to the house is it's actually going to be another house. So, so how much were you able to assign the contract for? Uh, 16000 Wow. That's great. So, but you know, sometimes that falls through. So what would your plan be if your assignment would have fallen through? I would have flipped it. I would have remodeled it. Yeah, um, but we just wanted to wholesale one. It was our first deal, so we were happy with that. Great. And can you tell me a little bit about how long you've been investing? In, uh, well, I've been in the uh, construction business a long time, and I know how to do things right. And uh, But we were more interested in doing it step by step. The next one we might flip, we had before. Yeah, we're in the middle of the Big Dogs program, and so that was on week seven of the Big Dogs program, and that was based on about seven weeks worth of marketing. And essentially, I've been a real estate investor for 
now we're in week 11 of big dogs and my background before this is marketing so I'm applying how to do everything that I know about marketing into real estate. The real key for anyone to remember on this deal if you want to remember anything is that my fiance here spent about 25 hours on the phone with this lady building a relationship. And in fact, when she was able to have all of her terms met, even with the short-term lease, and so we made sure that we felt such a good relationship, we even gave her a gift card for moving. So she got a Bed Bath & Beyond gift certificate to move in and That's great. enjoy her new house. <laughs> yeah, but the real key is build a relationship with the seller because that is your point of differentiation with other real estate investors. The other real estate investor backed out just because of the numbers and he didn't understand a zoning issue in Austin. And this lady was so friendly, it was really easy to get to know her. She had some drama, but it was normal. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's a great point you made of definitely taking care of the seller, which is essentially our customer. We may never do business with them again, but that's how you build your reputation and your brand, and, and I know that's something that you're very aware of with your experience. One other point you made that uh, was great was the consistency in the bandit signs. You've been doing it every week without stopping, and you notice other investors would do it one-offs and just decide it didn't work because it didn't work that one day that they put it out there. <laughs> we've, we've seen about four other investor signs in different weeks. You never Never see everybody at the same time. Never. Yeah. And we go, we go, we go all over Austin. We're covering about 12 zip codes with <laughs> bandit signs, and so we're seeing which which investors put up bandit signs and where. And it's just amazing to see. But the real key is consistency and really build a rapport with the seller because that's who we're taking care of. And she's actually referred us some other leads. So essentially, she's become a bird dog for us. Oh, that's amazing. Well, thanks for sharing your story. It's uh, I love hearing kind of beginning to end for stories like this, and it sounds like you... <laughs> All right, I'll go ahead and get in the camera. Yeah, there we go. Thanks for sharing your story, and hello, everyone, again. And um, hopefully we'll see you guys again next week with your next deal. Do you have any other deals you're working on right now? We, we we're did hustling. A, we're hustling. We have three properties under contract wow. right now. So we'll, we'll have hopefully at least three more stories in the next uh, few weeks coming from y'all. So. At least. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for sharing and congratulations. Thank and, you And uh, we'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That was awesome.